again from Hollywood. Our guest today is a one-time congressional page, a former beauty pageant host, and someone whose stock and trade is confetti. Join us in welcoming the riftingly funny Rip Taylor. And now, here's your man of the half hour, Skiffy Lowe. Elmer? Yeah. Where did that Elmer come in? You have to know how to start a show right, don't you? No, Elmer. Well, yeah, that's where you <laughs> yes. grew up in Washington? It's my real name. I know, but grew up in Washington. S Can you it. imagine Washington, D.C.? Nobody's born in Washington, D.C. Of course. Uh, Sophie Tucker was, yes. believe it or not. Oh, really? Yes, she okay. was. It's and I was. And there were great clubs there, too. Club Charles. Oh, I worked every strip joint in Washington, D.C. Ah, but before that, you at George Washington University. University. You did something there, did pantomime with Spike Jones. Pantomime to records of Spike Jones. That's how I started in the business. It's easier using somebody else's talent, I believe. Right. Uh, because then one day, I'll, a long story short, years later, the record machine broke and I haven't shut up since. That's how you started talking. Uh -huh. But I used all of their talent in my face to make the to keep working, and that's my first job was that. Spike Jones had a lot to do with uh, Rip Taylor's career then, yes, I mean, to get in the business, is that right? Yes, because it was so zany sounding and looking. Right. Even when they, you saw them perform, they looked and dressed funny, too, uh -huh. with funny props. Uh -huh. But also, Jerry Lewis started that way, as you know, in Record Panama. Mm -hmm. And he got that far with Dean, and then the machine stopped and broke, and he started talking. Now, where did this machine stop and broke with Rip Taylor? Now, it stopped and broke, uh, after I got uh, back from the Army in Tokyo, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay. When I first started with doing record pantomime, I went to high school in, in, in the Capitol Page School in Washington, D.C. And you I were was a page book. Page uh, in the Senate. Uh -huh. Can you imagine what I do now and what I, and what I did? Who were some of the senators? Well, it was fascinating. I did see him say, old soldiers never die, right. which is MacArthur. And I did meet Taft and Hartley, and I met Truman. It's fascinating. The history was just phenomenal. But I knew I was a ham in those hallways because you had to wear knickers and a black suit and black knickers. <laughs> and you'd all have to go uh, in, under the catacombs uh -huh. to get to the Senate office building, House office building, and Supreme Court to, do a, to get a document right. from the congressman mm -hmm. in the Senate. But I went straight through the rotunda with all the tours. Uh -huh. So I said, paging Senator Bilbo, <laughs> who was hot at the time, and he was the one in the paper. Uh -huh. And they'd say, the mothers would say, why can't you be a page like these people? Uh -huh. It was wonderful. So I was so hammy even then. Uh -huh. I knew I was going to be in show business eventually. You knew? You, that was your direction? You really well, I knew I was going to be something in the limelight because I truly was going to pursue politics. Because after you graduate from the page school, you get a job in an elevator, a right. private elevator. Mm -hmm. And I went to the SOB, which is Senate Office Building, mm -hmm. and they hire you to be the elevator operator. You only go one flight up, and uh -huh. they could have crawled the one flight. Mm -hmm. And then after you, they get off the elevator, someone came to me and says, what did they say? <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, I wasn't listening. He said, what do you think we hired you for? Uh -huh. So they were even eavesdropping in those days. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And in, uh, pardon me, a, a point of trivia, in our yearbook, when we graduated in my year, they misspelled Lyndon Johnson's name. They put J-O-N-S-T-O-N, Johnston, uh -huh. which is his trivia. Then he became the president. Mm -hmm. What was the first club that you worked uh, well, in I gave Washington? Myself Yes, in Washington, D.C. A strip joint, you say? Yes. That I gave part. myself a, a, a block party. Uh -huh. A high school, everybody came from school to the block party because Charlie Taylor was now going to become Pearson Thal. He changed his name. Mm -hmm. Then now he was going to become Charlie Taylor, C-H-R-L-I. Right. Then he became Chuck Taylor, who was a black football player for Iowa, and I changed that right away. <laughs> and I dyed my hair, got lots of makeup, and got four, uh, five or six uh, songs from the recording. Right and went to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh -huh. I get there opening night, the man fired me on the spot. What club was this? The, Chantic uh, the, the uh, Chanticleer. Chanticleer, okay. Yes, oh, it was unbelievable. No, the Chanticleer was in Baltimore. Baltimore, you worked. Chanticleer, yes. But no, this you, was, you didn't work the Chanticleer. I, no, I did not, but I worked in Baltimore. Yeah. But there was four bars at, the, I think, this club you're talking about. Oh, yes, I worked a terrible place. Called the, Clico Club, called the Clico Club in Atlantic City. That's it, that's it. Of which I've just come from now, so the circle's complete. Right. So anyway, I go there, and the man fired me that night. He said, go home and had kids, you have no talent. And the next day, I couldn't go home. I gave myself a block party the night before, for goodness sake. Uh -huh. So I went on the boardwalk, and I heard these very funny recording people singing, and I had never heard Hebrew singing in my whole life. Uh -huh. 
ever. I don't know why. But you were doing did. folk songs, though. Weren't but you? yeah, but I never did, didn't know what the guttural sound of a Hebrew recording Jewish was. I right. had no idea. Right. Very Gentile, very Goyim, very Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. And then I learned Romania, Romania uh, by Aaron Lebedolf. Right. And it's a very funny recording, and it sounded a lot like Spike Jones, and it wasn't, but it was a guttural sound in foreign language. Uh -huh. So I went in the club that night, and I begged him to put me on. He did, and I stayed 13 weeks doing Hebrew record pantomime for Jewish records in Atlantic City. And that's how the career started. First stripper, tell me the name. Do you remember the name of Pat that? Pat Amber Holiday was the first stripper I ever worked with. Worked with her, too. Hinda Wasu. <laughs> oh, I love these names. Go Hinda ahead. Hinda Wasu. Hinda Wasu. Oh, Najla Atash. Najla belly Nage. dancer. Oh, God, she was wonderful. Yeah. And then Rose La Rose. She was in Fanny, matter of fact. No. Uh, 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 Nigel. Nigel. Oh, Akash. yes, she was. And Fanny on Broadway. And uh, Lily St. Cyr. Now, that was class. Class. Uh, and who else? The one that's still working around now. Uh, Hope Diamond? Not Hope Diamond. Uh, she was my sister. Who else? Uh, the oh, one, that, the one that works in Lipstick in Lake Tahoe. Right. The, right. The red hair. Bla yes. Not Blaze Star. Yeah. yeah. Not Blaze Stars? Not, not Blaze, Blaze Star, no. No, the other one. I know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. So she she's this a, and I'm in her life. book. She's wonderful. Uh huh. So I worked with all the strippers. So they took me under, her, under their wing, right. so to speak, mm -hmm. and protected me from the people who said, oh, yeah, he's not funny to me, Harry. Uh -huh. And they held me over all the time because uh -huh. the stripper would go on and I'd do a three-minute record. Right. And the stripper would mix the audience, and I'd do a three-minute record. Mix in the audience. Ooh. I like that word you just said. Mix be, it. Be they drinking. used to be drinking. Now, folks, in case you don't know, you can verify this. Right. We, they'd have a drink, and they'd get a stirrer in the stirrer. drink. And well, the stirrer, they'd save the stirrers. Each one was a dollar when they got they off were marked. that night. The stirrers were marked. And they'd throw the drink on the floor and used to squish to the stage. <laughs> Just to get to the stage, <laughs> you would squish. The stench of the rugs in these clubs. <laughs> but don't forget, am I right or wrong? We right. were in show business. But that was show business. That was, we were in show business. That was kind of show business in the 50s. That really was. Well, it, it was unbelievable. You know, I, but, and then after Great that. Great schooling. It, it was. It then was after good. a while, someone sees you. Uh-huh. A performer sees you and sees more than the record pantomime. They said, come with us. You'll do wonderful. You'll open them up for us. And, the, and that's how it happened eventually. The first one that ever saw me was someone in, in uh, New York from the Ed Sullivan show. Wasn't, I thought I, uh, I thought you were in Miami Beach. Then I was in Miami Beach for a long time. Long at the time bar. at a The one Life Bar, Fifth and Ocean, the strip No, club. before that. And no, no, that after. was after. Then I went from Fifth and Ocean to 186th Street at the Thunderbird Motel. That's it, the Thunderbird. Where Frankie Scott and I were all year for you three or four You were a years. big hit at the Thunderbird. That's yeah. where Rip Taylor really became honed Rip the Taylor. Ta honed it, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Then you got on the Ed Sullivan Show. Yeah, I went to the Nebuli in the Catskills Mountains. People know that club. Right. And I hired the whole audience. I brought them. Usually there's a comic every night. And right. I said to the speaker, I'm tonight's comic. There's a man from the Ed Sullivan Show. I'll buy you all champagne now for dinner if you'll applaud extra loud. Uh -huh. So I paid $500, uh -huh. what I was making for the whole week, uh -huh. to give them champagne. And as I made my entrance that night, said, here's our tonight's comic, Rip Taylor. They all applauded and stood. I said, not now, what the finish. And he, uh -huh. he was in on the joke, and that's how I got the show. When did this confetti of Rip Taylor all began. Who gave, how did that all begin? Well, years later, when I did the Sullivan, then they, After they I know, I right. did the Sullivan, and then Gleason show, saw me, then I did a lot of Gleason shows. And then you were, some lady or some man saw you and brought you to Vegas, and you became a big hit in Vegas. Uh, Eleanor Powell. Who? Eleanor Powell. Tap dancer. Yes. Glenn Brilliant Ford. tap dancer. Really? Oh, wonderful. Tell me about Eleanor Powell. Oh, the sweetest angel in the world. You know how great, she, great a dancer she right. was. And uh, so she's before anybody. She was just magnificent. Uh huh. And she married to Glenn Ford at the time, you know. Right. They had just finished the divorce. Mm -hmm. So she found me, took me to Vegas four weeks, and then uh -huh. we did a tour. Uh huh. And then uh, they held me over again for, with Frankie Lane and then the Kingston Trio. And then Judy Garland saw me uh -huh. and took me on mm -hmm. a tour. Right. And that's how it happens, Skip. It happens but to all of us that way. It didn't. No, no, I'm it just didn't. rushing through it. I know. I don't want you to. I don't want you to rush And then through. it was Ann Margaret, and then Debbie Reynolds, no. and then Sammy Day. I want you to stop and tell me about working with this great lady, Judy Garland. Don't you? Uh, you no, knew I mean, her too, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I met her several then times. Then you know but that she could have been a comedian more better than a singer, because mm -hmm. her humor was so outrageously funny, and she was funny all the time. Right. Her life was pathetic, but she never took it serious. Uh huh. Never. All the kids, little Joey was here, and Martha was here, and Liza was here. Uh -huh. And she never got that serious or morbid about anything. 
didn't know the value of a dollar, I don't think. Uh-huh. Because she always had someone to take care of it for her. Uh -huh. But she was always with the kids, the two kids, mm -hmm. and John Bubbles and I and the two kids, we did a tour. Uh -huh. And she went to the palace, and her husband at the time said, no, get Jackie Vernon. So she didn't take me there and broke my heart. The palace, I know. But I was backstage every night in case he died. <laughs> God forbid. She was always a great lady. Funny. Great funny, funny woman. She had a great sense of humor. Funny woman. Funny. You can ask Lorna. They had him laughing Was all it the true time. about drinking oh, on yeah. stage? Oh, yeah. It was true. Not on stage. Not, not on stage? Never on stage. She'd get there a little early before the show and have a little, little libation. Right. Then it lasted longer than anticipated. <laughs> Rip, do you ever see any sadness? There was always sadness in her life because... You didn't see it, though. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see it. And I Never was with saw her a lot. I was with her a lot. But Never she brought it. that on stage, though. Well, it a played lot. in the songs. Maybe she, got, maybe she projected it. Uh -huh. But she didn't live it. She wasn't morbid in the She least. wasn't. Not at all. Funny. Laughing all the time. She must, you must have had a great time with oh, we, her. To we, be we with her. Oh, yeah. Just, we did. We just laughed all the time. Uh -huh. And I learned so much by watching what not to do on the stage, you see. Like what? Well, I mean, like doing dirty jokes. I didn't have to do dirty jokes. I thought I did, but I didn't. You don't uh, have to. No, you don't. What do you think about the comedians today? Oh, you're, I mean, you're, but if I say anything, then they think it's sour no. grapes and I become the dean of American humor, which I am not. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were at a recent affair for Milton Berle, you and I, and many, many other people, and it got so outrageously filthy, mm -hmm. unnecessarily so. And I'm not a prude, but I'm a prude in that case. There exactly. were women there who'd never heard those words, and I have them, but didn't want to hear them again. You know, who were totally embarrassed. I feel totally embarrassed insulted. to let a woman to hear those words on stage. I mean, stage. strange women. I mean, like, yeah. laymen were there, too, yes, uh, yes. at Milton's party. It was a lovely party. His 80th... Uh, 82nd. Second birthday. Yeah. Right. But Held it just at got so dirty. Yeah. It was filthy, and they didn't need it. They were... Did I get filthy? I showed my kneecaps. She happy birthday. You were course, wonderful. And that was it and got off. Yeah. Took my hair off, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I'm not saying I was wonderful, but I was clean and funny. Yeah. First of all, they shouldn't have held it at the Improv. They should have held it at the Friars Club. Or the Beverly Hills. Or the Beverly Major Hilton. Hotel. Major. But the Merth young Hotel. comedians got on that stage and used vulgarity. That yeah, Milton was, I think, embarrassed, but he may never admit it, but I think he was. It's unnecessary. Uh -huh. Anyway, so anyway, I what, what the new ones do now, and I'm very yes. serious, is they open up with four-letter words, and where do they go? Mm -hmm. They go straight down because they have no place to go. Mm -hmm. But if I say anything... Oh, what does he know? Right, well, I right. know humor. Of course you and do. And I'm still you working at it. But Rip Taylor studied acting with Wynne Hanman, New yes, York. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Tell me about those I days. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Someone at the time said, why don't you go to drama school? I said, what for? I'm not an actor. They said, well, it uh -huh. just help you. I said, how will it help me? Uh -huh. Well, I just went. Uh -huh. In the class was uh, Stevie Lawrence and Luba Lisa. Remember that name? God of love course. her. And Felicia Saunders, she was Great always singer. so unhappy. Great. Bonsoir. How are you, Felicia? The Bonsoir. Bonsoir. I couldn't be better. She was always so miserable, wore black every 24 hours. Uh -huh. So unhappy. Morgana King. <laughs> yes, yeah. Is Morgana unhappy? <laughs> no, they're Just both sad. They're very much alike. Very low king. And uh, Gary Collins, wife, Marianne Mobley was Miss America, so she was there. So was Jan Murray and Wynne Hinman's class. Uh -huh. Was he a good teacher? When oh, well, obviously he, he must have been if we all, most of us did comedy, went there. But a lot of club, you know what, what went there, were performers of the nightclubs, cabaret yes, performers. Yes, I wonder why. It was all cabaret performers. That's what I'm asking. He didn't specialize. He didn't say, I only teach help, help cabaret performers. Because he had my friend Dick Roman, the singer. Yeah, oh, I knew Dick. Wonderful singer. Well, Wonderful. Gave me my name. Really? Mm-hmm. What's gave your real name? Can you tell the uh, audience? Well, it's, it's Sammy. <laughs> Sammy Lowe. <laughs> Hello, Sammy. <laughs> Hello, Bobby Lewis. Hello. I, I want to know about this. This is great, Rip Oh, no, see, now that's just... one of my very first endeavors into the theater. In the theater. John Kenley put me in... Um, please hold that up. Yes, I want to show them the, the contrast. Right. Yes. This now, is... this isn't bragging. I'm just trying to show you the yeah. makeup. Look this is that. Peter Pan and Captain Hook. Peter Pan and And this Captain... is Mr. Darling in the first act, and it's the same person. Look uh -huh. at the makeup. Great. Great. It's just flattering. You love the theater, don't you? I like it now. I like it were now. Were you scared of it? I didn't, wasn't scared of it. I just thought they were all snobs. They make a dollar and a quarter a year with have attitude. Uh huh. That's every actor I've ever met in my life from New York. And they all said to me, oh, yeah, you're that Vegas comic. Uh -huh. I had half interest in a restaurant in New York with Teddy Hook and some people called Backstage, next uh -huh. to the Martin Beck. Yes, of course. It was so, it's better than Sardi's. Uh huh. 
And I'd hang out there every night when I'd finish my club dates. And they'd all say, oh, yeah, you're that Vegas comic. And I'd say, yeah, don't you forget it either. <laughs> anyway, they were snobs. So then I eventually got to do Broadway uh -huh. with Ann Miller. I was in Sugar Babies when Mickey went out. Right. And then I became a Broadway, Broadway performer. Performed. Now, to these little kids, I mean, to these major stars who made no money, weren't working, and had right. attitudes. Right. But now, let me tell you one more thing. Broadway is the easiest thing to do is it? and the hardest thing to get. Why do you say it's easy, Rip? Because well, because we worked in nightclubs to drunks. We play to people who smoke and drink and gamble and lose money and still make them laugh. Right. Because there's no contact out there. You can't feel. It's nope. darkness nope. out there. It's total dark. No. Nope. And you just, and in the script and the play, you stick and you blame the material if they don't like you. Uh huh. But this happened to be a, a burlesque show, so I knew how to handle that you pretty good. You did. Sugar babies. I'm still doing it. I'm going to do it again. You are. Yes. And Side and, and the Needleland is going to do it again. Uh huh. Soon. Who did you do just finished with? I just finished uh, recently in, re, in Sugar Baby. Yes, with, with Carol Lawrence. Mm. We did it for two years already. <laughs> and then I went to the my own review again with Merv Griffin's Resort. It's called Rip Roaring. Roaring. In Atlantic City. That's wonderful. Fifty people. You enjoy working in Atlantic City? No. No. Okay. I enjoy working. Atlantic City is uh, a different type of audience than he, out here in the West, only because they've done everything and they yell out loud during uh -huh. the show. Uh -huh. They think they, they come here, hey, hey, they're uh -huh. yelling at you and screaming uh -huh. and talking, uh -huh. which means it may be in one way flattering that they think they know you're from the television, uh -huh. but it isn't. It's distracting my train of thought, and I says, get your own show, you know, uh -huh. things like that. Yes. But they do interrupt you. They do heckle. I want to see that. What is that? The worry is to call it. They're the, called the worry people. If the camera could show me that <laughs> up there, just a little. The look at that people. hat. Get a close up of that Everyone hat. Everyone likes his hat. I it's love a little it. hat. It's a little hat skip from Mexico. Is it from Mexico? Yeah, well, the, the worry, worry committee. I love it. P they have them in little jars. And, and, and uh -huh. just to, uh, get, they worry for you. You don't have to worry anymore. Does Rip Taylor worry? Not anymore. I let them worry for me. No, no. no, no Does no. Rip Taylor? You seem like you're enjoying life right now. Well, I've enjoyed life all the time. It's just that uh, when you make the transition from nightclub to strip club to yes. theater, it's the people who are in the theater only see you throwing the confetti right. when you walk into the room to read for the audition, which you must do. Everyone must do. Exactly. Which, as you know, is the hardest thing in the world. Right. Because you're giving control to complete strangers you would never even dine with. Why would you give them control of your career and your life? Mm -hmm. But that's the name of the game in this town. Mm -hmm. So you have to act like, oh, hello, hello, and you don't even know who they are. Right. But they have seen you. That's how you got in the door. Now you've got to show your wares. Now I walk in, and the first thing the uh, uh, people say, the producers say, where's your confetti? Now I'm trying to get away from that for the play or the dramatic part we're reading for, and they bring it up, which shoots the audition Now, what down. kind of producers ask you where are your confettis? Everyone I walked in the room. Everyone I walked into the room. Really? Then I walk out of the room again. I come back with the hair off. Ah, now you're talking. Now. Then they say, oh, it's a different look, a different person. I said, I know that. Right. But you started with where is the confetti. All right. That's the difference. I'd like to see Rip do some acting. Yeah, well, I probably you, will. Acting. Now, I was in Nassau Big. last week with Merv Griffin. Right. And we had too much butter rum, uh -huh. candy. Uh huh. And I said, sew this on. And they sewed. Is that sewed on? Not mine. I love it, Rip. But look at the look of the 90s. Look at the Three pony. strands, nothing, and a, uh -huh. and a dead horse. It's great. It, it's great. Thanks. It's great. I love it. No, so, leave the hat off. Oh, okay. I love well, it. It's I think cooler. it's great. It's, a lot cooler. it's cooler. Relax. I love but it. But I wear the wig for the show, and then wig, you know, when I want. You take it off sometimes in the show. I take it off in the show because it falls off. I have it glued here and it falls on my eyes and we all laugh. I said, turn the fan off. Now you got a you just you got a new movie coming out. Yes, it's called Repossessed with Linda Blair and Leslie Nielsen. I'm in that movie. Right. And it's a takeoff on the Exorcist. Just when you thought it was safe to eat pea soup again. Uh huh. It's really silly. You Funny. I do my scenes with an Elizabeth Taylor look alike. Oh, really? How interesting. Yeah, show that picture. That, this that is, is the, Liz. Is this Liz? Yeah, th Liz? I was doing ah. Sugar Babies on Broadway, and she was doing Little Fox. Oh, so Taylors have something in common. So she says another Taylor <laughs> hits Broadway. I love yeah, it. She's a sweet woman. <laughs> is she? Oh, sweet. T firm. Shake hands with Elizabeth Taylor. You'll have a hard, firm handshake. I don't trust anyone when she they shake hands. Went, I like that firmness. And I say, why I do, do you too. do that? She said, because they love me so much, they want to meet me. Right. That they shake my hand, they could break it. You so like that? I like firm, it. She's a woman, a very interesting. I hate this. It says a lot about her, yeah. What do you mean says a lot about her? I mean, like she's firm, she's, yeah, she's a, in control. She's totally in control. And, and fun. Is she fun? Oh, yes. 
How about Rip Taylor? Fun. Are you... Okay. Is Not Rip, on is, all the time, no. which people is Rip, think. Is religious? Religious well, I have converted from Episcopalian to Catholicism to Baha'i uh -huh. to everything. Right. I don't know what the hell I am now. Are you happy at this moment in your life right now? Sir? No, I'm off today. So you see, when you're off, you'll never work again. Your career is over. Wasn't it nice while it lasted? Right. No. We're childlike. You know we're we have to work 24 hours a day. True, true. Otherwise, it was a nice career while it lasted. You keep working all the time. Oh, knock for Micah all the time. Because I'm commercial, when, the, when there was a strike on television, right. I had a nightclub act. Mm -hmm. I worked all the time. Did you write I was your that Vegas comic, remember? Yes. Did you write your own material? No, no, no. I wish I did. You had writers? Yeah. You hire writers, and then you steal in the beginning, and then you hire writers eventually. Then you get a character. Right. And then I started crying. So Sullivan called me the crying comedian. Uh huh. And I remember I that. Singing and dancing and things like that. Yes. With Debbie Reynolds. Uh, Debbie Reynolds. Yeah. My Very dear and friend. Closest. Closest. And what makes you so close? She in... is the epitome of, a, of the word friendship. She is there up and down, off and on, always. Uh-huh. Always. That's the type of human being she is. Like the Anne she's, Margaret's like that. She's too. funny. You know, oh, she's very She's good. very funny. She does me sometimes. She does. Oh, yeah. She's a clown. Hello, she does she me. She is a clown. And I say, don't do me. She says, well, I only steal from the best. So we laugh. Uh-huh. You're doing something right now, aren't you? Uh, I did a game show last week called Hold Everything that's in town. Right. Uh, but it's a weird hour that it was shown at 5.30 in the afternoon, so nobody's home to watch it. You like game shows? I like showing that you're intelligent besides throwing confetti. Uh -huh. People don't think we are. You know, they, can't, they, you know, they pigeonhole you. You had that show. You always show. find a preconceived notion of what's going to happen when you walk in the room. Right, right, right. You had that show called Dollar Ninety-Eight. Yeah, it was number Con three in the country before he took it off the air. Tell me about that. Well, Chuck Barris uh, did all of his shows before that, you know, the game, the, the gong, and the bang, and the bong, and the boom, and the bang. Right. And he uh, called me to do his show, mm -hmm. which he had filmed eight of himself, and then John Barber filmed some, and then he took them off and put me into the Dollar 98 Beauty Show mm -hmm. uh, with Ruth Shapiro, who was my mm -hmm. darling Ruthie Casting. Uh -huh. And then they put me on the air as the host of the Dollar 98 Beauty Show, which right. is wonderful. I never said anything derogatory about the girls, because I didn't want to be accused of it. The announcer did. So the ERA was on the announcer I of the see. show. I see. Then Chuck was at a party one night, from what I hear, and some, he said, gee, you have a lot of trash on this show. Uh. So he had 17 hours a week of uh -huh. trash. He got mad and says, I'll take it all off the air, uh -huh. and took it off the air. Then and everybody was out of work, and that's why it ha how it happened. Then he wrote a book, and he's in Cannes writing a book right now. Ah, is that we did a pilot year before last. Mm -hmm. Then he took it, took that off. He'll be back. He'll be back. He always is. Do you like television? I like the fact that you don't have to uh, uh, wear your hair all the time <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> anymore as a gimmick. Yes, yes. I like that you're in their home, uh -huh. and they like you in their home. Rip Taylor, when he goes out, clubs, uh, say, um, restaurants, People recognize you right away. Yeah, because I, I don't dress to go unnoticed. You know what I'm saying? It's the mustache. It's the voice. I didn't wear my hair in Hawaii la two weeks ago, and, uh, and I didn't think they'd know me, but they knew me. They knew my voice. The I voice. I didn't think it was so uh, uh -huh. uh, familiar, but it is mm -hmm. to certain people, I guess, if they knew who you, you are. You did a show I love, Anything Goes. Oh, what you a great show. That's I did a it Lincoln great Center. Ah. Lincoln Center. With lovely Leslie Uggams and Rex Smith. Oh, what a wonderful show that was. And Jerry Zachs won another Tony for directing. Uh-huh. And he's on Broadway. Moonface. Oh, I played Moonface. You'd be great in that part, too, Skippy. Nah, I'd, I'd like to do shows, but well, boy... Well, you should tell you... people you're available to do shows. They don't know that you watch it. <laughs> I'm Rip Taylor. They don't know that tell you want to do shows. I know this little Sammy a long time, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Rip Taylor, tell me about uh, Rip Taylor. And this Taylor. little nebbish is dance, like becoming dance. a character around. They all know dance. it. They all uh, want to do a show. Shh. Dance. I'm serious. They all want to do your show. Oh, you're sweet. I'm uh, dance. serious. You're a dancer? You I do dance. Yes, you'll scream. You it's do. hysterical. Do, do, very do. light on my feet. Yes, I am. You very light on your feet. And sing very well. I hit a G, which is amazing to some people. Not an opera singer or a threat to Pavarotti, but I can hit that note. Mm -hmm. You ever study voice? No, I want get Carla Minotti in New York? No, I, well, I, maybe for an hour I took a lesson and bought a tape. Uh-huh. Then I went, you learn from the strip clubs. That's right. That's I did. Right. That's a good... Uh, it was great schooling. The Playboy today, clubs didn't help me. Kids, Neither did the ships. It didn't, did it? The ships didn't? No. Nothing helped. Strip clubs Practical did help. Practical applications. Strip clubs helped me.
That's interesting. I did the you know same thing. Yeah, I did you know the same thing. And the, yeah, I agree with you. I know, and then you went to television and stopped doing your act. But Kids you can still do your act. Kids today. Yeah. Where are they going to go from here? Rip Cleveland. Where? Where? Where, <laughs> where do you places. see? Where do you see? Well, they've been comedy? to the comedy clubs, and all they do is say four-letter words. I mean, the idea of the comedy club originally, when Mitzi and her husband opened it, Sammy Shore, Shore, was to go in, break in material, come back and, and break it and break it and break it in, right. and then go out. Well, we were there opening night, and the first night we were all there, somebody stole jokes from the other ones. That's and I right. haven't been back since, because they're all like that now, and that's depressing. Mm -hmm. Now, right. if, and they think they're all going to get to sub it overnight. Mm -hmm. Now, there's 80,000 comedians. You put a 40-watt bulb in the corner, there's a comedy store. That's the truth. Is Rip writing a book? How about your book? I know you might write one, huh? I am writing, but you what are. about you, Rip Taylor? I think if you write a book, the most important thing is to get the title. The title will help you sell the book. The title? Yeah, I don't know what my title is going to be yet. Do you really? have any idea what you're going to do? I know you're writing a book. I'm writing, but I don't well, know Well, I want to be in it. You are in it. I want to be in it, because yes. it's true. We know we go back to me a long time. Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, I was there in those strip clubs, too. Baltimore. Uh -huh. I got to get back to Baltimore. They say Balmer. Yeah. Balmer. Baltimore is a great town. Was it? Show business town. Yes, it Strip was. joints. That's street. Lord, uh, Lord... Lord Buckley. Buckley. You knew him? I knew him in his life. What kind he of guy was he? called me the Prince of the Rippers. Oh, he was wonderful. Prince of the Rippers. He wore tuxedo white tails, uh -huh. day and night, meticulous dresser. Right. And very Lenny Bruce type. Wonderful. He would cuss, but you wouldn't hear a word. He would mumble so quickly. You knew Lenny? No, I never knew Lenny. Never did? No, I know his mother. And Sally, uh-huh. I used to sub in for Lenny. Did you? How well? yeah, was he? Was he, was he funny he was, or just I worked some clubs on, wa on Western Avenue. He was funny. Western he was here funny. in town? Yes, Western Avenue. He worked here. And uh, I subbed in for him. I used to make $50, $50 for the night, you know, uh -huh. strip joints, and that was it. But um, here in Hollywood. I thought you met Lenny. No, I never met him. Not, no. I was a cloistered child. Okay, get back to the ships. <laughs> You enjoyed doing the ships? Though? No, I never enjoyed the ships either. I did three only, and the Na and they were the Norway, which is the biggest in the world. Uh -huh. And I don't care if it's the biggest in the world. I still get seasick. They say, but they have stabilizers. Tell my stomach they have stabilizers. Oh, I see. I still smell that gas, and the stomach still goes to Cleveland uh -huh. all the time. You live with your mother? Live in Vegas? No! Bite you li your tongue! Cut no? that cord and go away! You're, oh, your cord, Joe. Please! Oh, your mother lives in Vegas, though. Oh, I gave her my house and she took it. She took it? Okay. How dare her! Oh, you, so you keep a house here? I have a. I legally live in Las Vegas. Right. But my corporation has a condo here. Right. And I'm getting one in Honolulu. Ah. That's you like right. Honolulu, don't you? Oh, I like it. I go there to heal. I go there to rest, to heal, to swim, and to work. I did a commercial last time I was there for Suntan.